Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail route learning series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the recently released Portsmouth Direct Line extension to London Waterloo, and going to be driving a commuter service on the Hampton Court branch onto the southwestern mainline between Hampton Court and London Waterloo for a total journey distance of around 14 and 3 quarter miles. The scenario that I'm driving is a custom created scenario following the real life timetable of train 2 Juliet 64, which is the 1954 service from Hampton Court to London Waterloo. Our stops along the way will include Thames Ditton, Surbiton, Berrylands, New Malden, Rains Park, Wimbledon, Earlsfield, Clapham Junction, Vauxhall, and finally London Waterloo. The train that I'm driving is a South West Trains livery class 455-8. The class 455s have been in service since 1982 and were manufactured at Brell York. They're part of the British Rail second generation family of electric multiple units based on the Mark III body shell. A total of 137 of these units were produced in three subclasses, formed of four coaches per train set. The maximum speed of each unit is 75 miles per hour, operating on the 750 volts DC third rail electrification system, and each unit weighs around 136 metric tons. Now in the cab of the unit there's just a few things I need to do here to set up ready for departure so let's just move the reversing handle now into the neutral position and as I do that reset the AWS TPWS self test sequence. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to press Ctrl and D to turn on the driver safety device, and now press I to turn on the instrument lights, and finally press the H key twice to turn on the headlights into the daytime setting. Now that I've done that, let's just have a quick look at the cab controls here. So on our left, we've got a standard West Code three-step brake. So if I pull the handle towards me now, you can see in the um, brake gauge towards the top right of the screen there that the right-hand needle has dropped, indicating that the brakes are releasing. So when that needle is pointing to zero, then the brakes are fully released. And the higher the needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied. So with the West Code three-step brake, I've got three brake positions. After release, I've got step one step two step three which is full service which I try not to use um, when driving and then finally there is a fourth step which is the emergency position now continuing around the cab here in front of us there we've got a horn control which is a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key Continuing further around the cab, now on our right hand side we've got the power controller which has four steps of power and I'm just going to gradually increase the power as I start the train moving and probably get to full power when we're doing around 20 to 25 miles per hour. So now that we've had a look at the controls, I'm just going to quickly open the windows here on either side, just because I think the train sounds better. Unfortunately, um, at present, the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 455 sound pack doesn't work with the Class 455-8 that comes with the Portsmouth Direct line updated. I'm hoping that there will be an update for that in the future. And I was originally going to drive this journey with the class 455 slash 9 instead, where the sound pack does work. But I decided to use the slash 8 just to demonstrate this train, as I've not actually driven this variant at all in any of my videos within Train Simulator. So now that I've set up the train ready for departure, let's just take another quick look outside the train here at Hampton Court Station before departing and heading out towards London Waterloo. Departing away from Hampton Court, the speed limit here is 35 miles per hour, with just under one mile to go to our first stop, which is Thames Ditton. So I'm just going to bring our speed up towards 35 miles per hour now, and I'm going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast until we're able to accelerate further. The 
speed limit is now going up to 45 miles per hour and immediately after the post there we've got a 1 in 127 upward gradient which will cause us to lose a little bit of speed and now as we reach the gantry just there that we've now passed under and now accelerating up towards 45 miles per hour. going to shut off the power and I can now see the platforms at Thames Ditton Station just coming up. So now I'm going to start applying the brakes to bring our speed down, making a step two brake application. Here at Thames Ditton Station I'm aiming to stop at the 8 slash 10 car stop sign, which is near the end of the platform. slowing down slightly too early so I'm just reducing the braking momentarily and you can now see the stop signs just coming up on the left hand side there and now we should be stopping in about the right place if I just wait just a couple more seconds in fact just reduce the brake just for a second now reapply and this should be about the correct place to stop Departing away from Thames Ditton, the starting speed limit was 45 miles per hour, though it's quickly dropping to 30 miles per hour at this point. And we've got around two miles to go to our next stop, which is Surbiton. So I'm just remaining in notch two of power for now, just to ensure that we don't end up breaking the 30 mile per hour speed limit. In a moment, uh, the, the uh, gradient, should I say, is going to be going up at 1 in 70. So we're actually going to lose a little bit of speed. And then immediately afterwards, we're going to be going down at 1 in 67. So I'm just cutting the power back for a moment to allow us to lose that little bit of speed so that when we're on the downward gradient, we don't gain too much speed. And hopefully, I won't need to use the brakes for speed control. So we're now starting on the 1 in 67 downward gradient. And then as we join the southwestern main line in a moment, then the gradient is going to be leveling up and the line speed is going to be going up to 85 miles per hour though we do need to bear in mind that the maximum speed on this train is of course 75 miles per hour. So we're just passing an underbridge here and I'm going to start accelerating just after this underbridge. And so now I'm going to accelerate up towards line speed. At the underbridge there we had one and a quarter miles to go. And very soon we're going to be passing a speed post for um, an 80 mile per hour speed limit which won't be affecting us due to the speed that we're currently traveling at but once we reach the 80 mile per hour speed post and then going to idle the power to allow the train to coast reach the 80 mile per hour speed post. I've just shut off the power to allow the train to coast and I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment for Surbiton Station just as we come up on some points on the right hand side. So there's the point just there. So now I'm making a step two brake application to bring our speed down. That should be roughly the correct braking point. And here at Surbiton I need to aim to stop near the eight car stop sign near the end of the platform. 
Um, I would just like to, at this point, apologize for the frame rates in this video. Unfortunately, on this particular route, with so many AI trains, when you're trying to do this as realistically as possible, the game engine really struggles to handle it all. And so for most of this video, we're going to be averaging uh, 15 to 20 frames per second. At some points, we'll get up to 25. But I don't think at any point we're going to quite get up to the full 30 frames per second. So I can just see the eight car stop sign now coming up on the right hand side. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Surbiton, the speed limit here is 80 miles per hour, though soon dropping to 70 miles per hour, with around one mile to go to our next stop, which is Berrylands. Speed limit dropped to 70 miles per hour there, and now it's going back up to 80. I'm going to idle the power at this signal just here, and then I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment at the next point, up to step two. And at Berylin Station, I need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. Release the brakes slightly too much there, so I just had to go into step three braking momentarily. Now let's just pull that back slightly to make a slightly smoother stop for the passengers. Departing away from Berrylands, the speed limit here is still 80 miles per hour, with one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is New Malden. a warning for an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed restriction so that warning is half a mile from the speed limit itself i'm going to idle the power in a moment just as well just before we reach the next signal and i'm going to apply the brakes for our stop just as i see a signal on the left hand side slightly below us for a different track Just see that signal to our left. You can see there's a red light there. So now I've not and now I've got the brakes in step two. And this should bring our speed down quite nicely for New Malden Station. I'd just like to say here that this is actually uh, the first of two planned videos for this route. The second one will be a journey all of the way from London Waterloo to Portsmouth Harbour. 
And I've got a choice of three different trains I could do this in in three different time periods. So I wanted to give you the choice on that. And the most popular choice um, that's left in the comments is the one that I'll do. So the first is the modern day journey done in a class 450 or class 444. The second choice is to do the journey around the turn of the millennium, at which point um, we were using um, old slam door trains. And the third choice is to use a class 442 in Network Southeast Days. So here I've just stopped at the eight car stop sign. Departing away from New Malden, the starting speed limit here is 60 miles per hour, with around one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Rains Park. And as I was explaining just as we were stopping there, um, the second proposed video for this route, uh, the modern day version is pretty clear. Uh, but for the other two, so the one at the turn of the millennium, I'm thinking of maybe driving a class 421 in Southwest Trains livery, uh, just around the time when the class 450s and 444s were starting to come about. So with a mixture of old and new traction, and for the third video, they did used to use class 442s on the Portsmouth direct line in Network Southeast days at times. So I was considering doing a journey in that. Whichever of the three is the most popular choice is the one that I'll drive. So please do let me know in the comments. So just idled there at the overbridge that we've just passed, allowing the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes now for Rains Park Station, and just as we approach this next signal. slowing down slightly too early here so just cut the brakes back slightly. Rains Park's got a very interesting uh, platform layout so you've got quite the staggered platform as you can see there. There's also another platform to the far right at the back of the platform on the right that you can see and there's also a platform to our left um, which I believe is from the Chessington branch. So here at Rains Park I need to stop at the S which is at the end of the platform. I just released the brakes momentarily as I was definitely going to stop too early. I'm just going to coast towards the end now. Now let's start reapplying the brakes. Just into step one. I'm going to stop just with the signal ahead still visible in the driver's window. Departing away from Rains Park, the speed limit here is 60 miles per hour with around one and a third miles to go to our next stop, which is Wimbledon. At this point I'm going to continue accelerating until we reach the second signal after Wimbledon Station, though having said that, I do have a cautionary signal here, so I do need to keep an eye on that. In fact, I should probably shut off the power at this point, and then if the next signal is displaying a single yellow aspect, then I'll have to start applying the brakes, assuming that the following signal is displaying a red aspect until I can see otherwise. It appears that the signal has jumped there to a double yellow, which means we are cleared now into Wimbledon Station. There will be a 30 mile per hour speed restriction coming into force just around the area of the next signal, and we're just coming up on the 30 mile per hour speed warning now, and you can also just see the next signal ahead. So I'm just gonna make a step one brake application to start bringing our speed down for the upcoming 30.
here at Wimbledon Station. We're going to be joined by the London Underground, I think it's the District Line, and in addition to that, also over on the far right of the station, we're joined by the Croydon Tramlink. Unfortunately, we don't have any suitable trams for AI um, in this, but I have put a London Underground train on the left-hand side on the District Line platforms. I've used the AI uh, S-Stock train, which comes from the Just Trains Chilton Main Line. Here at Wimbledon Station, I need to stop at the 8 sign, which is right near the end of the platform. just see it coming up on the right hand side now we've got the 8, 10 and 12 coach stopping point and we should now be stopping in just about the right place Departing away from Wimbledon, the speed limit here is still 30 miles per hour, though it will soon be going up to 40 miles per hour, with one and two thirds of a mile to go to our next stop, which is Earlsfield. So I'm just remaining in notch two of power for a moment, just um, to ensure that we don't break the 30 mile per hour speed limit. And now as the limit goes up to 40 miles per hour here, I can accelerate in a moment just before the next point, which is coming up just ahead. Now that we've reached 40 miles per hour, I'm going to shut off the power here. I'm going to allow the train to coast. And here we're on a very steep 1 in 39 upward gradient, which will cause us to lose speed. But then afterwards, once we've crested this gradient, we're going to start going down at 1 in 39. And we'll actually gain speed again. So this is just to ensure that I don't really have to use the brakes too much for speed control. I believe it's also efficient because I'm saving power by doing this. speed is now gathering back up towards 40 miles per hour. Now this signal has jumped to double yellow, that means we are cleared into the platforms at Earlsfield Station. The gradient has now levelled out and the speed limit here is going up to 60 miles per hour. I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast along here at around 40. I'm not really going to bother accelerating at this point as we are now quite close to Earlsfield Station. Something else that I'd like to make a note of here is that I was originally planning on releasing this scenario onto Steam Workshop. Unfortunately, I've been unable to do so because the game itself isn't allowing me to upload this scenario for some reason, even when I've removed all of the third-party uh, AI assets. So I'm hoping that with the next scenario that I create, the journey from London Waterloo down to Portsmouth Harbour, that I will be able to upload that one to Workshop instead. Uh, especially if I'm doing it in a different time period where there's uh, much more stock available for the AI. So now coming into the platform here at Earlsfield, I need to stop at the 5, 6 and 8 coach stop sign, which is around two thirds of the way along the platform. And just see that coming up in the distance on the left. I've just released the brakes momentarily. Now I'm going to increase the braking. Step one there. And hopefully, it's quite difficult to guess here, but hopefully this should be the correct stopping point.
Departing away from Earlsfield, the speed limit here is 60 miles per hour, with around one and two thirds of a mile to go to the next stop, which is Clapham Junction. And unfortunately at Clapham Junction, that's where the frame rate's really going to take a hit. And it may well be that I get frame rates as low as 10 frames per second, just because of the sheer amount of AI there to try and make this as realistic a scenario as possible. Another thing I'd like to point out is that, as I said, I couldn't actually upload this scenario. However, there is a scenario available that comes with this route following this same journey just an hour earlier, although the signals might be a little different on that uh, journey. If you'd like to attempt to drive without the HUD, then you could potentially try it with that scenario instead. So you need to keep an eye on the signals here. As that signal is double yellow, I'm now idling the power to allow the train to coast along here. If the next signal is displaying a single yellow, then I'm going to immediately have to start braking for the following signal to ensure that I don't uh, go through any reds. So that uh, was a single yellow, it's just done to jump to a double yellow now. And so at this point, I believe we are cleared all of the way into the platforms at Clapham Junction Station. Now joining us on the right hand side is the Brighton Main Line. I just applied the brakes for a moment there, so I thought we were coming in a little bit quick, but actually we were okay. And so you can see that there's a Southern Class 377 on, I believe it's a Littlehampton to London Victoria service, just to our right hand side. And you can now see the platforms at Clapham Junction just coming up. So I've now made a step two brake application to bring our speed down. It's actually very difficult to get precise control of the braking and the speed with such a low frame rate as we've now dropped down to 10. In fact, we just dropped to seven for a moment there. Um, this frame rate will actually start jumping up once we've left Clapham Junction Station, thankfully. Here at Clapham Junction, I'm aiming to stop at the eight car stop sign, which is at the end of the platform. So I'm being very careful with the braking here due to the frame rate, trying to be as precise as I can. As you can see, we've got the 8, 10 and 12 coach stop sign just coming up on the left here. And now, hopefully, this should be stopping in just about the correct place. Departing away from Clapham Junction, the frame rates thankfully already jumped up to 14 frames a second, which is a little bit more manageable. Uh, the speed limit was down to 50 miles per hour for a moment there, though we'll quickly be going back up to 60 miles per hour. And we've got around two and two thirds of a mile to go to our next stop, which is Vauxhall. Accelerating comfortably up towards 60 miles per hour here, and then once we reach 60 miles per hour, I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. Now 
about to pass under the Brighton Main Line and the station just coming up on the left hand side there on the Windsor Lines is Queenstown Road Battersea. We're now passing a long overbridge here, and then afterwards we're going to pass two signals. Um, after the second signal, a quarter of a mile beyond that is a 40 mile per hour speed restriction. Coming up on the second signal now, I'm applying the brakes into step one. In fact, I might go up to step two because we've now got a single yellow signal. I believe I can see the following signal ahead, which is currently displaying a red aspect. I programmed this scenario so that there's quite a bit of congestion going into London Waterloo, which is uh, pretty normal and pretty realistic. Certainly if you were to have a scenario where you've got all green signals on this route, that really doesn't seem like it would be very realistic to me, knowing what this route is like in real life. So we're now passing the 40 mile per hour speed post. As you can see, we've still got a red signal coming up just ahead. So I'm trying to crawl up to that signal with the hopes that we won't have to stop and we'll be able to start accelerating again towards Vauxhall Station. Just as we passed the 40 mile per hour speed post there, we had just under half a mile to go to Vauxhall. signal has now jumped to a single yellow and we can be begin to accelerate once again. So I'm just going to accelerate to no more than around 30 to 35 miles per hour um, before we have to start slowing down for our stop. And at Vauxhall Station we need to stop at the end of the platform. So we can just see the platform coming up there so I've just shut off the power now around 32 miles per hour. I'll apply the brakes as we enter the platform here. Now just going to release the brakes momentarily as we're slowing down slightly too much. The frame rate here seems to have eased up a bit as well, which is making my life considerably easier. So we've got the 5, 8 and 10 coach stop sign just here. On the right, so I'm just waiting until that's gone through the middle window there, and this should now be the correct place to stop. Departing away from Vauxhall, the speed limit here is 40 miles per hour, with around one and a quarter miles to go to our next and final stop, which is London Waterloo. Now that we're doing 40 miles per hour, I've shut off the power here to allow the train to coast. I'm keeping a very close eye on the signals ahead, as I see we do have indeed a single yellow signal there, which means I'm immediately braking to ensure that I'm bringing our speed down in time to be able to stop at the upcoming red, which I can just see just around this left-hand curve here. So once again, I'm gonna try and crawl up to the signal in the hopes that we won't have to stop.
just jumped to a single yellow so now I can just bring our speed up slightly. Just after the next signal the speed limit is dropping to 15 miles per hour just before London Waterloo Station. At this point I'm not really going to accelerate much so I'm not going to go above 20 miles per hour because of the close proximity of the signals and now need to assume that the next signal is displaying a red aspect until I can see otherwise. see the signal ahead is indeed displaying a red aspect. So I'm just bringing our speed down gently once again just to try and once again crawl up to the signal in the hopes we won't have to completely stop. signal has just cleared and it's got the platform indicator of platform one so we're now cleared into platform one at London Waterloo station the speed limits dropping to 15 miles per hour so I've just brought us up to around 15 that we're just doing slightly over it's just a minimal bit of braking there to bring us to 15 and now I can coast into the platform here at London Waterloo station as we enter the platform I'm going to slow to around 10 miles per hour and then I'm going to try and be down to around 5 miles per hour, no more than one coach length away from the buffer stops at the end of the platform. Just brought us down to 10 miles per hour now. And very shortly I'll be braking just in step one to bring us down to five miles per hour. As already stated, um, no more than one coach length away from the buffer stops. I'm going to aim to stop just as the buffer stops disappear into the bottom of the driver's window. So this should be a good place to stop. Here we are, arrival at London Waterloo. And thankfully, or should I say finally, um, the um, frame rate has actually jumped to 30 frames per second. Not quite so useful now that we've stopped. So thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with the link to my Facebook page in the description of this video, along with the link to my Patreon page if you'd like to sponsor this channel. Once again, thank you for watching.